Welcome back everyone to the second video in our Thinkorswim tutorial series. In the previous one, we discussed how to download the platform and some of the basic navigation. But in this one, we're going to explore the account info section to better understand your balances and learn how to customize your workspace settings on Thinkorswim. Now, beginning first with the account info section, you're going to find all of your balance information in the upper left hand corner of the screen. So looking here at the moment at this paper money account, you can see the values listed out here include option buying power, net lick and day trades, day trades left, cash and sweep vehicle, and available funds for trading. Now here in a minute, we're going to edit what these actually display, but if we go through them just one at a time for a second, the very first value we see up here, the option buying power figure, this is going to be pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It's going to be the amount of money you have for non-marginable things like options contracts or penny stocks or futures trading. So in this example account that we're looking at at the moment, we've got currently $126,032.88 available for things like options, things like penny stocks. Right below that, we've got the net lick and day trades. And honestly, you're just going to think of this as what is the overall value of my account? What is my account worth right now? So in this case, this account is currently worth $213,821.31. If I was to sell every position in the account and ask for a check, that's how much money I would get. Right below that, you can see the day trade left. And in this case, this account still has three day trades left until it gets flagged as a pattern day trading account. For those of you watching who are looking at this and going, hey, this account has way over $25,000 in it. Do not worry. This is just telling me how many day trades I have left until I'm flagged. It doesn't mean I can't do more than three day trades. In this case, if I was to do four today, tomorrow I would wake up and this would now be a PDT account. It'd be a pattern day trading account. I'd still be able to trade just like normal. The only difference would be that I would also have another value here called day trading buying power. Essentially, Thinkorswim or Schwab would actually give me additional leverage. I could actually borrow even more money to trade with. But I know a lot of people get worried when they see this day trades left right here, three remaining. And honestly, you only have to keep track of that really closely if you have less than $25,000 in total in your account. So if this value right here, the one that says net lick and day trades, if that value right there is less than 25K, you will want to keep an eye on this day trades remaining value. Now, right below that, the cash and sweet vehicle, this is going to be exactly what it sounds like. This is how much cash I have in this account right now. So if you were wondering how much money could I spend on stock, on options, on anything without actually borrowing any money or going on margin, I could spend $52,768.43. That'll also be the amount of money I could withdraw without going on margin as well. But if we look right below that, the next figure here, the available funds for trading, $126,032.88, you're actually going to notice that this figure right here matches the option buying power exactly. And honestly, they're always going to match unless you make a recent deposit. So usually I'm going to customize this a little bit and actually put the things in here that I actually want to keep track of. And one thing I'll do is usually get rid of one of these in order to make room for something else. So if that's something you guys ever want to do, all we have to do in order to edit that is come up here to the menu icon in the upper right hand corner. Go ahead and open that up. Then down below in the drop down menu, go ahead and click on customize gadget. That'll then show us all the columns available to us over here on the left hand side and then all the columns we're currently using. And you'll actually notice there are some in here that we didn't see a second ago. And that's just because I've got this little button down here in the lower left check mark, the one that says hide non applicable items. And because this account isn't approved to trade things like Forex or trade things like futures, that's why I'm not seeing those values in here. But one thing I do want to do is actually rearrange this a little bit where it makes a little more sense. So one thing I like to do is actually move net lick up to the very top. That's going to be the total value of my account right below that. I like to see exactly how much cash I have because I never like to borrow on margin. So that's going to be the next figure there. Next up, I am going to keep option buying power figure here, but I am going to get rid of the available funds for trading right down here. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. And instead, what I'm going to do is replace it with a different metric, and that is going to be stock buying power. So now that that's been added and the other one removed, let's go ahead and hit OK here. 
And now you're going to see up in the upper left hand corner, I've got a nice big figure here, the stock buying power, 261,000. This is going to be how much leverage I have available to me if I wanted to borrow as much as I possibly could. So in this case, again, it tells me I could borrow or I could buy 260,000 worth of stock. That's going to be fully marginable stock. But because I only have $52,000 in cash, that means over 210,000 is going to be on margin. So if I were to actually do that, if I was to buy $261,000 worth of Apple right now, you would actually see my cash and sweep vehicle number go negative $210,000. So if I was to see that, if I was to see a negative number in my cash and sweep vehicle, that's going to tell me that that is my margin balance. So if I've got a negative number here, I am borrowing on margin. Another thing I'm going to point out because I've been saying in this account, but actually I have got all of my accounts selected up here in the upper left, which means this is the total across all of the accounts that I've got linked to this one. So if I was to change that, let's go ahead and click on the all accounts tab up here and let's instead just flip it over to the IRA account. You can see in this IRA, I've only got $87,018 and there's about $7,800 of cash. You're also going to notice that all of these values, the cash and sweep, the option buying power, the stock buying power, they're all going to be exactly the same in a retirement account. And that's just because I can't borrow anything on margin in a retirement account. These values also could be different if I were to place an order right now that hasn't filled yet. So if I was to place an order to buy $5,000 worth of Apple and it's still an open order, I'm going to see my option buying power and my stock buying power decrease by that five grand. But my cash and sweep is still going to be $7,800 until the actual trade happens. But hopefully that helps. And the last thing I'll mention about the account info is that if you ever minimize this side panel, so if you came down here and hit this little arrow on the left hand side and got rid of it, you'll notice that by default, those values that we had a second ago in the upper left are now across the top of our screen. And at the moment, the only thing I can see up here is option buying power and cash and sweep. So if I wanted to add those other values, I'd have to come up here to the gear icon in the upper right hand corner of the platform. And now I can see that exact same little customized window that I saw before. And I could add those values just like I had. If I wanted to add net lick back, I could just go ahead and find it. Double click on it. And we'll move it up to the very top. And now you can see I've also got net lick up there as well. For me, I always like to keep that open. So we'll come back down here and hit the little arrow to open back up our side panel. Hey everyone, sorry to interrupt the video, but I just finished working on the beta of my very own trading journal. So those of you active traders out there, especially those of you who trade options, might find this especially useful. Here you're gonna be able to quickly identify your performance by strategy, see a calendar of your daily profits and losses, and overall just create more detailed reports based on any of your filtered criteria. So check it out using the link below or head over to traderlog.io to give it a try for free for seven days and use the code traderlog50 for 50% off. But enough of that, let's get back to the video. And now that we've got that out of the way, moving on to our workspace, we discussed it in the last video, how you can actually add tools to this side panel over here simply by coming down to the lower left hand corner, clicking on this little plus sign here. And then within this little select gadget menu, we could simply add what we want to see. So in this case, if I wanted to add another tool here on the left, I could add another watch list simply by finding it, clicking on it. And now I've got a nifty little watch list down here. We can also delete things pretty easily by simply finding the menu icon of the thing we want to get rid of. So in this case, if I'm getting rid of the Trader TV, I'm going to click on this little menu here come down here and hit delete, and that'll get rid of it. If I wanted to move things around, like let's say I wanted to put this level two data up on top of live news, I could come down here to the gear icon in the lower left, find the level two here, and let's say I wanna put it at the very top. So I'm gonna drag it up a little bit and then let go. Now, while we're here, I'm also gonna mention how the linking in Thinkorsim works. So if we were to look at all of these little gadgets over here on the left hand side, you're going to see that each of them have these little chain link icons next to them. The only one that doesn't is this watch list right here, which at the moment, instead of having a little link, has a little yellow two next to it. And that simply means that that watch list right there is linked to the color yellow, meaning everything linked to yellow will have the exact same symbol in it. So they're always going to be synchronized. Now that sounds a little bit weird. So let me give you an example here. If we were to look at my chart up here in the upper left hand corner, you can currently see this one is linked to red one. 
So if I wanted to control this chart by using this watch list down here, what I'm going to do is change this little color down here to the exact same one as my chart. So in this case, red one. Now that those two tools are linked, if I was to click on a symbol here, so let's say I clicked on NVIDIA, you're going to see my chart on the right immediately flipped over to NVIDIA. If I click on Microsoft, it'll flip to Microsoft. Click on Palantir, it's going to change it to Palantir. If I was to also link my, let's say, live news to red and my level two data to red, you're now going to see the exact same symbol is in each of these. So now up here, I'm only seeing the open orders for Palantir. I'm seeing the level two on Palantir. I'm only seeing news articles that mention Palantir. And if I was to click on a symbol down here, again, in the same watch list, you're going to see all of them change to that symbol that I click on. So that's how the links work. And you'll notice that over here on the right, I've got three additional charts and none of them are changing when I click on these symbols. And that's because all of them are either unlinked or linked to something else. So if later on you wanted the same symbol in each of these charts, but maybe you wanted a different time frame, maybe you wanted this one in the upper left to be the minute chart, this one up here to be the five minute chart, this one down here to be the 10 minute chart, whatever you might want. If we always wanted it to be the same symbol, we would just change all of these links to be the exact same color. And now you can see in each and every one of them, I've got first solar at the moment. But if I came down here and clicked on NVIDIA, I've now got NVIDIA in all of them. We click on Netflix, I've now got Netflix in all of these charts. So hopefully you can see those links are pretty straightforward. And honestly, until you start getting really advanced with Thinkorswim, you're probably just going to make all of your tools the exact same color. You'll make them link to the exact same symbol. Just keep it simple. And then maybe later on when you're working with multiple different charts, you might have different color setups. But for right now, just keep it all the same. Now, besides that side panel, of course, we also talked about the main window over here on the right, which at the moment is a bunch of charts. But we did talk about how we can access all of the different tools in here by simply using the navigational tabs right up here at the top. So obviously, scan tab if we want to create a scan. Analyze page if we want to look at the company's earnings or fundamentals or analyze the risk of a particular trade. We can go to the trade page if we want to trade options or stock or anything like that. We can go to the monitor page to keep track of our open positions. But if we want to change the overall settings of our workspace, maybe we want to change the overall color theme or we want to change the font size or change the order defaults. What we have to do is come up here to the setup menu in the upper right hand corner of our platform and then click on the application settings. This is where we can control the broad settings of the app. So everything that I mentioned before and a bunch of other random stuff. Now there's a lot in here, but there are a few settings that I can see just about all of you adjusting. So beginning first with the look and feel down here, this is where we can change things like the color scheme. If we wanted to go to the light mode, or maybe we wanted to make our own custom theme, this is where we could do it. So just as a quick example, if I was to click on this and come down here to the light mode and then hit apply down here, now we're looking at the light version of thinkorswim. If we instead wanted to make our own custom theme, if we come back up here to setup, we open back up the application settings, go right back over to look and feel, but this time in the color theme menu, if we come down to the new based on, and we've kind of got to create a theme from a starting point. So we're going to use the dark theme as the starting point. You'll notice that that opens up a separate little window here where I can change the color of just about everything in this platform. So if I wanted to make these candlesticks yellow and blue, maybe I'm colorblind, I can do it. If I want to make the background yellow for whatever reason, I could do it from here. And then once I'm happy with something, so let's say I did actually want to do that. I want to change the color from green to, I don't know, how about this bright blue? We'll just do that. We'll then give it a name I can remember really quick. So we'll just call this uh, blue candles and then hit save down here. If we come back down and hit apply, you'll now notice that everything that was green before is now switched over to blue. So all of these values over here in the watch list, blue. If we go back to the charts, blue. So definitely play around with that and see if there's maybe some different color schemes that you like, maybe something easier on the eyes. That's where you can play around with it. But while we're there, if we go back to those settings for just a second, the other thing I'll point out and look and feel that a lot of you might adjust is going to be the font size. So currently I'm on the large font size, but this is where you could make it small, medium, or extra, extra large. If for now I'm going to leave it set to a large, but one other thing while we're here, if we come over to the display settings on the left, 
One thing that people generally prefer to see is the P&L, so their profit and loss. They prefer to see that in green and red rather than just white, which is how Thinkorswim displays it. So if you guys want to adjust that, what we can do is come over here to the show color as price ticks, and then to the right, just check mark both of these boxes. So check mark position statement, check mark account statement. And then if we come down here and hit apply, you can now see that those values are actually displayed in red, or in this case, I still left it on blue. So let me flip that back over to the normal dark mode. I do not want my candlesticks to be in blue. And now you can see here for the day, I was down quite a bit, $963 overall. Actually, that's since opening these positions, but then for the day, I'm actually up $12.96. So that just makes it a little bit easier to see overall how much I'm up or down for the day. And you're also gonna notice if we go back up there, there are a lot of other things that we could adjust if we need to. Settings that you might wanna come in here and just take a peek at, see if there's anything you wanna adjust. You can also adjust your alert settings up here where it says notifications, how you wanna be alerted if a, let's say a trade goes through or if you log into the account or just when you have an alert activate, how do you wanna be notified? That's where we can adjust that. If you ever wanna change your order defaults for stock or for options or futures, basically how many contracts or shares you typically trade, this is where we could adjust that. Or if you ever wanna set up your hotkeys to make it easier to trade or to navigate around the platform, we could also do that from here as well. Now, finally, the very last thing I'll mention is once you've set up your platform exactly the way you like it, I wouldn't do it when we're only this far along, but once we've adjusted quite a bit and you wanna make sure you don't lose any of that progress, in order to save all of that, what we're gonna do is go back up to that same setup menu in the upper right-hand corner, but this time in order to save it, we're gonna come down here to save workspace as. You'll then have a little option to give it a name. In this case, I'm just gonna call it my test workspace, just for right now. Go ahead and hit save. And now if anything ever happens, if I make a mistake, if I kind of screw something up and I wanna go back to this layout that I had right here, all I have to do to reopen it is go back up to the setup button and then find my workspace down here below. So right here, test workspace. And if I was to click on that and then hit okay that I wanna reset my platform to that layout, this would then go back to exactly how it was when I saved it. And I know we didn't notice anything change because it is exactly how I had it a minute ago, but that's how we can save things and then reaccess them later. But that'll conclude this video on setting up your workspace settings and understanding that account info section to better track your balance information. If you're still in the mood to learn more, definitely check out this next video in the series to learn exactly how to view and manage your open positions, how to cancel orders, how to close positions, everything you'll need to know. I'll see you there.